everyone lay your hands as you, we start this prayer meeting with isaiah 61 1 which is the first reading this prophecy has been fulfilled in jesus christ luke chapter 4 and because it is fulfilled in jesus christ who became man and dwelt amongst us and resurrected for us he died for us and he rose again from the dead for you and me and therefore we are partakers we are co-heirs with him we are we have the spirit of adoption that is sent and therefore we can recite this prayer for ourselves isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 extremely powerful open your open the eyes of your heart as saint paul says believe now no room for doubt believe the spirit of my the spirit of the lord god is upon me because my Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to proclaim the year of favor to all. We are also reading... In this third Sunday of Advent, as St. Paul says, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Rejoice always. It is difficult to do, but St. Paul says, Rejoice always. It is not just revelation, it is a command. We are commanded to be joyful. Pray without ceasing. Pray continually. That means be in the presence of the Lord. Be close to the Lord. Know that the Lord is near. Know that the Lord is Emmanuel with you, with us. And know that the Lord is in us. And also know that the Lord is for us. So he is near us with us, in us, and for us. And then Saint, uh, Holy Spirit through St. Paul says, give thanks in all circumstances of your life. The worst, the good, the bad, the ugly. The best and the worst. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Jesus Christ. St. Paul uses in Jesus Christ or in Christ in his apostolic letters, in his letters in the New Testament more than 160 times. In the book of Ephesians, there are only six chapters. St. Paul uses in Jesus more than 36 times. Now, in Jesus is a new life, a new beginning, a resurrection life, a life in the spirit. It is a covenant life. It's a New Testament life. It is a new environment. It is a new zeal. It is absolutely, totally brand new life that you and I have been given. And therefore, St. Paul says in the reading, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise any prophetic utterances that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift, the charism of the Holy Spirit in second uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, chapter 12, chapter 12, verse number 8, 9, and 10. In 1 Thessalonians, St. Paul says, do not despise prophetic utterances. <clears throat> and we are told to test everything, but retain only what is good. Your human mind should 
test everything that God puts or allows in your path every day, but only retain what is good. That is called discernment. And discernment is a free charism given by the Holy Spirit who is baptized and who opens his heart to believe and receive the free gift of the third person of the Most High, God, the Holy Spirit. Refrain from every kind of evil. And then St. Paul says, May the God of peace, God of peace is another word for Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity, but also for the Son of God and also for our Father God. Make you perfectly holy and may you entirely, spirit, soul and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the first coming was coming in the form of a baby. And then the Lord says, I will come again. The one believer is in that position of his life to expect the coming to remain in that weight of the coming of his love which is the beloved which is jesus christ just as in the earthly realm physical material realm you when a lover and a beloved are in love how they wait upon adventures in latin wait to wait same thing the your spirit inside you your your spirit which is you must be wired or is wired by god to wait to expect the coming of god jesus christ now it is not merely expecting jesus christ only uh, 2000 years ago prophetically when he came as a baby because love knows no bounds love can become a baby to become man to die for you because the wages of sin is death and therefore god chose to die for you to take your place to go at warning for your death for your sins by taking your place now it's not only then or it's not just the second coming but the lord comes to you where he said in matthew 18:20 where two or more are gathered together in my glorious majestic magnificent awesome wonderful name name above all names and the only name that is given under heaven to people on uh, to the mankind uh, acts of the apostles chapter 4 that name when we are united together then he is right in our midst he comes jesus comes so you be preserved blameless for the coming of Lord Jesus. Whenever you invoke his name, that's how far he is. God exists beyond space. There is no material, there is no difference, distance between you and God. There is no closeness or nearness. That proximity, God, God exists beyond space, beyond time, beyond matter. So God is also in you. Now, the one who calls you is faithful and he will also accomplish it. Accomplish it means accomplish what? Accomplish your redemption. You have been granted salvation. You have been saved. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13 and 14 says, you have been marked by the Son of God. So you are marking is by the Son of God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. You are marked. Whether you believe or not. Bible says you have been marked. So when people see you. You are marked. You may not see it with your physical eyes. 
but you'll have to open the eyes of your heart to see to see that mark of the son of god and saint paul says you are also sealed by the spirit of god the third person so you marked by the son of god jesus second person of the holy trinity and then you are sealed it's like a contract when you seal the contract there is no walking back and that is the reason for advent hope because that contract has been sealed by the third person of the holy trinity this is a contract new testament new covenant and it is marked that means a signature it's in the name of jesus without that everything falls that contract is nullified cancelled it can be cancelled but because it is marked by jesus it is it has the highest authority in the spiritual realm and because it is sealed when the contract is sealed then you cannot walk back and that's why saint paul says the one who calls you in christ is faithful father son holy spirit is faithful and because you have been sealed in ephesians 1:14 further saint paul beautifully explains that 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 is the deposit so you pay that down payment for the future of your redemption that is the coming of jesus and he will accomplish it because your down payment has been done your deposit that's the word used in the scripture deposit which is a guarantee and that's why first week of advent that is that hope you hope in that truth not something which is your own fantasy or something that is told to you it is scriptural and that's the hope that you will that will give you joy so today's advent theme is about joy and saint paul says rejoice always so rejoice in that hope which we examined in the first week of advent saint paul gives saint thomas aquinas gives an example of prophet job and prophet job is the old testament prophet but the cousin the paternal cousin saint james in his letter of our lord saint james cousin of our lord from saint joseph's side gives in james chapter 5 verse 11 james references the steadfastness of prophet job so we need to understand what, what is this steadfastness this steadfastness in absolute worst circumstances and attacks of his life was the steadfastness that is the integrity and the consistency and honesty in believing in jesus christ which is their hope so that is what saint aquinas links to 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 be able to endure your sufferings by rejoicing because of this guarantee of hope saint peter saint aquinas quotes first peter chapter 1 verse 3 we have been born anew we have been born anew we were dead in our transgressions in our sins we were dead that means cut off from all good all love all joy all peace all beauty all blessedness but now we have been born anew from death we have been born anew we have been been given the spirit of adoption and through jesus we have been made a child of god john 
first gospel of john 1 10 romans 8 we have been made co-heirs with jesus and that is the joy that is the reason for joy and St. Peter says, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the hope is therefore is before our God, not before the eyes of men, not before whatever is offered in this world, not anything of this world. Now, some questions we may need to just examine our conscience before Christmas is what is the gospel today asking us to do by saying, give thanks in all circumstances? In all circumstances, question is, can we really be thankful when we are deeply attacked? Bible is saying you need to be having that demonstrating your radical faith by being grateful in the worst of your life circumstances. That's what it is. Because in every circumstance, give thanks. And that is God's will for you. Now that is radical faith. An example of radical faith is demonstrated when you Every Friday, contemplate and meditate on the passion of Christ. For example, the first mass when Jesus broke the bread and he said, take this, do this, repeat this in memory of me. And unless you eat my body, you will have no life. So when he was saying this, it was Judas. And before that, Jesus demonstrated radical acceptance by washing his feet that is radical faith now every so many uh, this is also judas is the typology the prefigure of all apostles or all priests who would betray the lord and therefore grieve the holy spirit quench the holy spirit and just as Judas did not accept God's mercy, divine mercy, even at the last moment, and in despair took his own life and went to hell. You know, that ending, Jesus would easily have prevented. He, his divine mercy is on offer to each and every priest and each and every lady. And each and every person in this world. So that is the radical demonstration of faith. And Jesus, by his example, in his passion, gives us. And <clears throat> that is what St. Paul is saying. Precisely is taking our attention this Advent before Christmas in every circumstances because that is god's will are we grateful to god do we express our gratitude to god do we express do we say thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you father thank you holy trinity one god one triune god now how can you be thankful in, say, a difficult circumstance of your life. How can you re retain this, obey this command? Because if you do not fulfill this command, you are out of God's will. So how can you thank God in a difficult circumstance? Why? First, we need to know it's not us. Not, you cannot rely on your power. The truth is, St. Paul points out that God is faithful. That means God is in control. 
and his governance is good just and merciful he is in control god is in control of your situation saint paul says in romans 8 out of evil out of evil god specializes is a master in bringing out good the worst of human errors the worst mistakes and choices that you have made in life god can turn that around beyond space beyond matter beyond time without any limit but it is up to you because unless you act on what you believe you you will you will tie god's hands because of the free will so point number 1 is radical expression of gratitude in all circumstances because god is in control of that difficult situation now saint augustine says there is a deeper meaning of joy he is emphasizing saint augustine says what is joy because today's advent is about joy the theme is joy and therefore saint paul starts with rejoice always saint augustine says this joy is a gift because of your relationship with god joy means not to enjoy and have a good time that is not the joy or rejoicing saint paul is commanding holy spirit through saint paul is commanding saint paul uh, holy spirit is saying rejoice because of the lasting covenant that god has done for you and therefore you have to rejoice always in the lord and because it is eternal it has infinite significance you need you, saint saint augustine says the relationship that you have with god in your life that is a degree of joy that you will experience in simple worldly example the one you love in your family close to you it's the love which is you treasure you value and even in situations that are difficult you will strive to repair to be close to that person now because god is infinitely good god's joy is designed to remain in your spirit in your will in your soul in your heart or ever now this is the true teachings of the catechism of the through the catechism of the catholic church that the only true church the catholic church commands us in the catholic scripture to rejoice if you fail this simple command then you need to examine am i full of complaints bickering may be cursing may not be blessing fault finding where my soul is digressed diverted am i living the reality that god is with us me god is with me 
perhaps I am not receiving Jesus in the Holy Communion that worthily or treating him as a dead object the moment I receive him. May I need to examine that aspect of my life seriously. Perhaps I don't believe in the power of the sacrament of confession and receive his pardon. Because that aspect must restore your joy that the devil steals from you. He's very, very, he's, he's the thief. When you are adoring Jesus Christ in the blessed sacrament, isn't shouldn't that fill you with joy are you filling with joy from the right source because the only source is the holy trinity god the father god the son god the holy spirit these are the only source of joy are you filling your heart spirit mind life with God's joy, with the right source? Or are you seeking to feel having a good time by some good food or maybe some entertainment on YouTube or TV or internet? <clears throat> How are you filling yourself? That is junk. That is filling yourself with junk. That will steal your joy. These are the areas where you should also in your, in your sphere whom God places, you should influence them to seek joy. You must have that effort to tell others. And to gently, lovingly correct, to lead them to that right path. Now, in all events of your life, of our life, first thing we need to understand is, God is with us. He is in us. He is near us. He is for us. Are you aware of this truth? Now, your physical eyes will not see this. But you walk by faith, not by sight. Second Corinthians, St. Paul says. So, do you, are you aware and you, are you applying this? God is hidden, but he is real. Just as the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist is real. He is literally physically present and after receiving that it is the fountain of infinite joy eternal joy every moment re we repeat that over and over and over again <clears throat> now there's a battle within us there's, you are at war Romans chapter 7 whether you know whether you pretend not to know, but Bible says, until your last day in the body, you war within. There are two contradicting, opposing forces that are at war in you. One trying to drag you the other way. One is the evil spirit and one is the Holy Spirit. Now, how can, when does a person lose that joy? Because this is interior battle. So the joy is interior. When you start living for the devil. In other words, you start living for your self, selfish motives. Examine those motives. St. Jose Maria says, or Jose Maria says, for a Christian, joy is a treasure, a gift, a, a treasure that he values or she values. 
it is only by placing self before the will of god does that christian offends god and therefore that is the reason to lose joy <clears throat> it is the result of sin whether sin in words deeds thoughts it is that root of sadness when you become in the state of joylessness or misery you do not experience divine mercy sweet mercy of jesus from his sweetest heart sacred heart that is the moment that you know god is not near you that is the distance that you have created that sin creates between you your soul your spirit and god you are unhappy that joy is lost in the human life because god is not the center of your soul at that moment you dismiss god from being in control of your life that is why the exhortation of saint faustina is to say jesus i trust in you every day jesus i trust in you for my parents for my children for my job for my house for my social witness for my personal witness for family witness community witness for my church witness for the world's witness for worldly life in other words how are you living and these are the questions we need to examine this is the perfect time when you are expecting jesus to come it is real god is going to touch you he has begun the work to touch you to fill you but it is not a lifestyle focused on materialism it is not a lifestyle focused on the pleasures of the world that's what our catholic saints have time and again taught us that path it is a lifestyle of spiritual longing and expecting jesus to touch you it is an encounter that only encountering jesus in your life you will receive that union with god that joy of life praise god hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus so jesus we ask you to send your holy spirit which you have already given us to touch our life to touch all aspects of our life to touch heal our mind our thoughts to set us free to love one another from the prison that you came to set the captives free thank you jesus thank you now thank you jesus there are a lot of things in our lives that it is hard to be thankful for but notice saint paul holy spirit doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances he doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances he says give thanks in all circumstances we are not thankful for any evil for example it's not a lot of things we we should not be thankful for but in every circumstances not for those circumstances that have come upon us someone does evil act we cannot be thankful for that someone insults you someone expresses the anger against you you cannot be thankful for that but 
in that circumstances you need to thank god god thank you for insulting me i glorify jesus christ when you say that prayer it god can bring evil good out of evil that is the biggest that is that is the difference because in this fallen world what good can you extract can you, can you find can you seek at times it's hard even to bear simple things but magnify god in all circumstances that's also the guideline of our holy immaculate mother mary because when you magnify when you practice magnifying god god is infinitely bigger than sin or a bondage that sin confirms you to then god promises to take away your pain your sufferings and to definitely bless you he turns all those good fridays into easter he's master and he'll do it over and over and over again in every small crosses that god sends allow him do not act hastily thank god and allow him watch how he turns your crucifixions into your resurrections that is the joy my is my prayer that you and i experience in deeper mystery with christ remember god has a plan for your life in everything when you thank god in all circumstances he will use that for good in your life even if there is pain it's not going to last forever because of the hope that jesus has marked me saved me healed me redeemed me delivered me and because of that hope <clears throat> as saint teresa doctor of the church child uh, saint teresa of child jesus little flower says if in small things even when you wash dishes even if you wash a spoon but you do it with great love you will go to heaven even if you pray she says lord i want to spend my purgatory here on earth god will answer that prayer you have to believe one thing with uh, we will leave this with is both uh, st peter and st james says when different kinds of trials come your way when people behave diabolically in your relationships in whom you deal with count it as joy count it as divine heavenly joy this is a paradox it is a perfect contradiction when people contradict you count it as joy when satan attacks you count it as joy why god allows in his permissive will for you to experience that cross that crucifixion why 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 ask why because god wants to make your character like whom like jesus he said i am the way the truth the life i am the way so god's going to put these crosses in your life but god wants you to build your character like jesus he wants to shape you like jesus he wants to 
make you grow like Jesus. He wants you to grow in Jesus. And therefore, he wants you to thank God in all circumstances of your life. So Lord, help us to stop complaining, to stop finding fault, either in the lives of others or in my life. But I need to be grateful at a physical level, just in the physical level. In Medjugorje, Mother Mary said, if you want to look beautiful, don't put those foundation or makeup or whatever you put. You need to have love in your heart and you need to express that love, Jesus' love, holy love to others. The, mo the moment you start expressing that love, you will become cheerful and beautiful. That's what Mother Mary said. It is recorded. Now, just a little bit of science. When you even smile, when you show your, when you just say cheese and uh, say smile or when you say bright or happy, those even those words, there are certain chemicals that are produced in your brain in your nervous system. And those chemicals, when they are released, and these are three chemicals, dopamine, D-O-P-A-M-I-N-E, serotonin, and oxytocin. These three chemicals make you feel at ease, relaxed, stress-free, peaceful, and happy. That is why it is said an attitude of gratitude is something you can start the moment you wake up. Just say, Jesus, I thank you when you wake up. And really mean that. And Jesus, take control of the whole day today. That, in scientific level, is also engaging and allowing God to change your brain chemistry. Because a life of ingratitude will quench the Holy Spirit in you. If you complain about the weather, if you complain about how you look, it's going to really, you know, take away all that joy from your life. So we thank you, God, for this wonderful revelation in this week of Advent to live a life of rejoicing and be grateful in all circumstances. Always be thankful. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Pauli. Yes, thank, thank you, Linda.